Welcome to another noadam.com video. We are group B2 and we will be going over finite probability space today. Uh, I'm Josh Nani. The other group members are Chase and Hurst, David Brownman, and Shatu Lu. So in finite probability space, S is going to be your sample space. So for example, the sample space when rolling a dice would be uh, any possible number that you could roll. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 and E is an event that happens in the sample space. So the event E would be, for example, that you roll the number one when you're rolling a dice. So the probability that E happens, which would be the event that you roll a certain number on the dice, would be E divided by S. This is because the event E could happen in s different ways, so the probability that event e happens would be e divided by s. So for example, the probability that you roll a 1, there's only one way you can roll a 1, so e would be 1, and the sample space is the six different numbers that you could uh, possibly get when you roll a dice, so you have a 1 6 chance of rolling a 1 on a six-sided dice. So if you sum all the events together, the probability of each event, sorry, they should sum up to 1. So for example, the probability that you roll a 1 on a dice would be 1, 6. The probability that you roll a 2 would be 1, 6. The probability that you roll a 3 is 1, 6, and so on up to 6. And when you add all these up together, they equal 1 because they should all sum up to 1 because at least one event has to happen out of that sample space each time. Okay, so the probability that E doesn't happen, given the summation before, is 1 minus the probability that E does occur. Now this would make sense because the probability, for example, say you roll a 1 on a dice, the probability that you roll the 1 is 1 6, and the probability that you don't roll a 1 would be 5 out of 6 because there's 5 other numbers on the dice that could show up beside a 1. Hey guys, it's Jason. Um, welcome back. We are going to examine example number 8 in the textbook on page 449. This example is about bit strings. We all love those because we're all computer scientists. If you're not a computer scientist, you will learn to love them soon. All right. So a sequence of 10 bits is randomly generated. What is the probability that at least one of these bits is zero? Well, let's consider how many possibilities there are. So for each bit, there are two possibilities. It, each bit could either be a one or a zero. So we have two. But we're taking 10 bits. So there are 2 to the 10 possibilities of bit strings that we could get, strings of 10. 2 to the 10 equals 1,024. So there are 1,024 cases total. That is our finite sample space. So now we want to know what is the probability that at least one of these bits is a 0. Let's start by considering the, uh, the only case in which that's not true, which is the case in which we have all ones. There's only one way that you could get all ones, and that would be to have ten ones. So that leaves us with 1 over 1,024. We have 1,024 total possibilities, one case in which there's all ones, or in which there are no zeros. Now, we're trying to find the probability of having at least one zero. So, we're going to use theorem one, which states the probability of the complement of E equals one minus the probability of E. The complement of E is this one over 20, 1,024 number that we found. So, we end up getting that our probability of finding at least one zero, we'll call it probability of E, P of E, equals one minus one over 1,024. 
this total comes out to 1,023 over 1,024. The 1,023 number is the number of possible bit strings that contain at least one zero. The 1,024 uh, is the number of total bit strings possible. Also, before I conclude this example, I'd like to point out that if you are a computer scientist and you discover a bit string or of, with 10 bits and they're all ones, I'd like you to go and buy a lottery ticket for me because your chances are very good. All right, thanks, guys. Let's do some little recap about our favorite dice example. Suppose we have two dice, so we are going to roll these two dice. So how many different outcomes are there? And the answer is 36. We can find out the total number of outcomes in two ways. The first one is by enumeration. So we have to write down all the possible outcomes and then count how many there are. And it, it turns out there are 36 different ways. This method is quite annoying because you have to write down everything and it may take you a long time. So the second way to do is to do combination. So the there are C six one different numbers that come up for the first first die, and there are C six one different numbers that have come up for the second die. So by the product rule, they are six times six, which gives us thirty six different outcomes. So the second problem I want to go through is sampling without replacement and sampling with replacement. The problem is as follows. What is the probability that the numbers 11, 4, 17, 39, and 23 are drawn in, in that order from a bin containing 50 balls labeled with the numbers 1, 2, da da da, 5? So there are two different cases. The first one is if the ball selected is not returned to the bin before the next ball is selected. So in this case, the total possible outcome is P55. And the way you choose these balls in the water is only one. So this gives us the probability. And for the second one, if the ball selected is returned to the bin before the next ball is selected, the total possible outcomes is 50 to the power 5. And the way the total number of ways you can choose the ball in this order is only one. So this gives us the probability and it is 1 over 50 to the power 5. Hello Josh. Hey there, how's it going? Do you want to be smart? Yes, I want to be really smart. How smart? I want to be as smart as Ye Yun Shi was in the third grade. If you want to be as smart as Yao Yun Shi was in the third grade, visit No Adam.